Every network you use from your home Wi-Fi to the internet itself is built on a specific topology or layout. Understanding these topologies isn't just theory. It's essential for IT students, anyone preparing for certifications, and for anyone who wants to see how networks really work. In this video, we'll break down all the major network topologies and their characteristics. Let's get started. First, let's quickly go over some key terms. A node is any device on the network, like a computer or router, and a link is the connection between nodes. The physical topology describes the actual layout of cables and devices, while the logical topology shows how data flows through the network. Some topologies suffer from a single point of failure, where one broken link or node can bring down the whole network. To prevent this, networks often add redundancy by including backup paths. Other important factors are cost and complexity of setup, scalability, or how easily the network can grow, and performance measures like latency and throughput, which represent the delay and data transfer rate respectively. A good topology should also provide reliability, keeping the network stable even under failures. The term broadcast domain refers to the area where broadcast traffic is shared, and collision domain is where data packets can collide on shared links. Being familiar with these concepts will make the upcoming topologies much easier to follow. First, we have the bus topology. In a bus topology, all devices are connected to a single central cable called the backbone. When one computer sends data, the signal travels in both directions along this cable until it reaches the right destination. In this topology, terminators should be placed at each end of the backbone cable. Terminators keep signals from bouncing back and causing interference which can degrade performance and reliability. The downside of this topology is that its design has a major weakness. If the backbone is damaged, the entire network stops working because everything depends on that one cable. This is known as a single point of failure. Another characteristic is that all devices on the bus are in the same broadcast domain, which means every device hears every message, even if it's not meant for them like shouting down a hallway where everyone can listen in. Historically, bus topologies were common in early Ethernet networks, especially with coaxial cables such as 10 base 2 and 10 base 5. They were popular because they were simple and cheap to set up, but as networks grew larger, the limitations became obvious. Collisions, poor scalability, and low reliability. A helpful way to picture it is as a single road with houses along it. If the road is blocked, no one can reach their destination. That's why modern networks have largely moved away from the bus design, replacing it with more efficient and reliable topologies. Next, we have the star topology. The star topology gets its name from the way it looks when drawn out, a central point with lines radiating outward, like the spokes of a wheel or a shining star. At the center sits a hub, or more commonly today, a switch, and each device in the network connects directly to it with its own cable. This makes the structure simple to understand and easy to manage. Several devices can connect at once, making it a very practical setup for homes, schools, and offices. If one cable breaks, only that device is cut off, while the rest of the network keeps running. But there's a downside. The central hub or switch is a single point of failure. If it goes down, the entire network stops working. Compared to a bus topology, star networks require more cabling, which increases cost but the trade-off is better performance, easier troubleshooting, and great scalability. And because of these advantages, the star topology has become the most widely used design today, found in most modern lands. Building on the basic star, an extended star uses a single central switch that connects to several other switches, with each of them serving a few devices. This lets the network expand to more users or areas while keeping the layout organized. A distributed star connects multiple switches in a line, with each switch managing its own devices. This spreads network control across several switches, so the failure of any single end switch only affects its local devices. However, intermediate switches are still needed to relay traffic between different parts of the network, so they remain critical for overall connectivity. Moving on, we have the ring topology. In a ring topology, Every device is connected to exactly two others, forming a closed loop, much like traffic moving around a roundabout. Data travels in one direction, passing through each device until it reaches its destination. This design keeps communication organized, but it also means that if one cable breaks, 
the entire connection is disrupted. Compared to a bus topology, the ring is slightly more expensive and harder to set up, but it can achieve faster data transfer in certain configurations, especially when using what's called a token ring. In a token ring, a small 3-byte token circulates around the network. A device can only send data when it holds the token, and the token travels along with the data to the next device before being released for the following device to use. Some networks even use a dual ring, adding another path for data to travel in the opposite direction. This improves reliability, since if one path fails, the other keeps communication alive. Still, ring networks are not very scalable because adding or removing devices means temporarily breaking the loop. Another structure you might come across is the daisy chain topology. As the name suggests, it links devices one after another, just like the links of a chain. Each computer or node is connected directly to the next one, with no central switch or hub in between. This makes the daisy chain easy to set up and relatively inexpensive, since it requires less hardware and cabling. It's a simple and compact design, often used in smaller or temporary setups. However, this simplicity comes at a cost. Because data has to pass through each device in the chain, longer connections introduce delay and latency. And if a single cable breaks, every device beyond that point loses connection, a clear single point of failure. For that reason, daisy chains are more common in device-to-device -device connections, like chaining monitors or USB peripherals, rather than in modern large-scale computer networks. Moving on to a different approach, we have the mesh topology. The mesh topology is all about reliability and redundancy. In this setup, devices are connected in a web-like structure, where each node can communicate directly with several others. This creates multiple paths for data to travel, making the network extremely resilient. Even if one link fails, the information can still reach its destination through another route. In a full mesh, every device is connected to every other device offering maximum fault tolerance and high performance, but at the cost of complexity, cabling, and expense. Setting up and maintaining such a network requires a lot of hardware and planning. A partial mesh, on the other hand, connects only the most critical devices to each other, keeping costs manageable while preserving much of the reliability that mesh networks are known for. Because of this balance, mesh topologies are often used in data centers, wireless systems, and mission-critical environments where uptime is essential. Up next, we have the tree topology. The tree topology, also known as the hierarchical topology, organizes devices in a branching structure that resembles an upside-down tree. At the top sits the root node, such as a main switch or server, which connects to intermediate switches or other devices, and those connect to individual computers or smaller networks. This setup combines the structured organization of a star topology with the expandability of a bus. It's efficient and scalable, meaning you can easily add new branches without affecting the rest of the network. However, it does rely heavily on the upper layers. If a major connection breaks, entire branches below can lose access. Despite that weakness, the tree topology remains a stable and cost-effective choice for large organizations because it keeps networks well-organized manageable, and easy to grow. And lastly, we have the hybrid topology. The hybrid topology combines two or more different network structures to take advantage of each one's strengths. In this example, a bus backbone connects two star networks, each with its own switch and connected devices. This topology represents how multiple designs can fit together, creating a flexible and adaptable network layout. Hybrids are often used in large organizations where different departments may need different configurations, yet still remain connected through a common backbone. They're scalable, as new segments can easily be added, but as you may have guessed, they also come with higher cost and setup complexity. Still, when performance, scalability, and reliability all matter, hybrid topologies offer a balanced and practical solution. Now let's talk about the point-to-point -to -point topology. In a point-to-point -to -point topology, just two devices are directly connected, forming the simplest possible network link. Think of a PC connected straight to a printer or a dedicated line between two offices. This setup allows fast and reliable communication as data travels along a single, direct path with no intermediate devices to slow it down. It's stable and efficient, 
making it ideal for scenarios where two nodes need constant communication. However, while it's cost-effective for small setups, it doesn't scale well. Adding more devices quickly complicates the network design. Up next, point-to-multipoint. In a point-to-multipoint topology, one central device, like this tower, connects to multiple endpoints, such as offices or buildings. It's a logical topology, meaning we're focusing on how data travels, not the physical layout of cables. The central point manages communication with each connected node, forming several one-to-many logical links. This setup is common in wireless ISPs and campus networks where one access point serves multiple receivers. It's cost-effective and efficient, but as more devices connect, bandwidth can be shared and congestion may occur. A related concept here is broadcast, where instead of sending data to specific devices, a signal is transmitted to all nodes in the network, like we mentioned earlier in the video. Now let's talk about a logical bus. A logical bus is a topology in which devices send data as if they are connected to a single backbone cable, regardless of their actual physical setup. Take a look at this example. Although the physical arrangement forms a star topology, the data travels along a logical bus because the hub in the middle broadcasts it to all connected devices, no matter who the intended recipient is. This setup behaves just like a physical bus would, making it cost-effective and relatively simple to set up. However, it also creates a single collision domain, which should be managed by protocols such as carrier sense multiple access with collision detection, or CSMA slash CD for short. Logical buses are common in older Ethernet networks and small-scale setups, showing that the physical layout doesn't always dictate how data flows. Just like we saw with the logical bus, in a logical ring the data flows along a defined path from one device to the next, forming a circular loop. Even if the physical wiring isn't a perfect circle, the network behaves as if it were passing data around in order. A familiar example of this are token ring networks, where a small token frame circulates the loop, granting one device at a time the right to send data and preventing collisions. Multiple devices can connect to a multi-station access unit or MA, which links them together to maintain the logical ring. Logical rings are more complex than buses, but provide predictable and orderly data flow. They also keep the same characteristic of a single point failure. Now let's look at the logical switch topology common in modern Ethernet networks. Physically, it still forms a star. Each device connects to a central switch. But logically, it's also considered a star, since all communication still flows through that same central point. What makes it distinct as a logical topology is how the switch manages data. Instead of broadcasting to everyone like a hub, it reads the destination address and forwards data only to the intended device. This creates a temporary, direct link between the sender and receiver, almost like multiple point-to-point -point connections happening at once, making the network faster, more efficient, and free from collisions. This intelligent data flow is what defines the switch star as a separate logical topology, even though its physical shape remains the same. Now let's look at wireless technologies, which describe how devices connect without physical cables. In infrastructure mode, Every device connects through a central access point, like a Wi-Fi router. The access point acts as the bridge, managing all communication and linking devices to the wider network, the same way your home Wi-Fi connects your laptop or phone to the internet. In contrast, ad hoc mode removes the central device entirely. Here, each device connects directly to others, forming a spontaneous peer-to-peer -peer network, great for quick file sharing or temporary setups but less stable and scalable. Taking this idea further, wireless mesh networks link multiple nodes together, allowing data to hop from one to another through the most efficient path. Even if one node fails, the others keep the network running. While mesh networks can be seen as a more advanced form of ad hoc communication, they're typically larger, self-organizing, and built for long-term, reliable connectivity, often used in smart cities or large-scale Wi-Fi systems. These three technologies show how wireless networks can range from simple home setups to highly resilient, self-healing systems. And lastly, let's take a look at modern networks. In modern networks, not everything depends on physical cables and switches anymore. We now rely heavily on virtualized network designs that bring more flexibility and control. A VLAN, 
or virtual local area network, divides a single physical network into multiple logical networks. This allows different groups of devices, like employees from different departments, to stay separated even while using the same switches. VLANs improve security, reduce unnecessary traffic, and make network management easier, all without adding extra hardware. An overlay network builds on that idea by creating virtual connections that run on top of an existing physical network. It's like building a private network within a public one. Technologies such as VPNs and VXLANs are common examples. They encapsulate network packets to make remote or segmented systems communicate as if they were on the same local network. Finally, SDN, or software-defined networking, takes virtualization to the next level. Instead of managing each switch or router individually, SDN separates the control plane, which is the decision-making part, from the data plane, the part that actually forwards packets. A centralized controller manages the entire network through software, allowing automated updates, dynamic reconfiguration, and a global view of traffic flows. In short, VLANs segment physical networks, overlay networks build virtual ones on top, and SDNs control them all intelligently through centralized software. Together, they form the foundation of modern, flexible, and scalable networking. In conclusion, network topologies define how devices connect and communicate, both physically and logically. From simple setups like bus and star, to more advanced ones like mesh, hybrid, and virtual designs, each topology offers its own balance of performance, cost, and reliability. As networks have evolved, so have their structures, moving from cables and hardware toward flexible, software-driven systems like VLANs and SDNs. Understanding these topologies gives us a clearer view of how modern networks are organized and how data truly flows behind the scenes. That wraps up our look into network topologies, the blueprints that keep our digital world connected. If you enjoyed this video, check out the other lessons on the channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more tech insights. Thank you for watching.